Welcome to the very first lecture in the spawning system in Unity chapter. In this chapter, uh, we are actually going to learn how we can create a new spawning system inside Unity and how we can actually spawn different objects at different positions. And in this very first lecture, we are going to actually set up our project. So here I have the new tab open in our Unity dialog. So first of all, I am going to name it as spawning system and I am going to start with the 3D uh, type. So let's just create a project and wait for Unity to load up everything for us. Now, since our project has opened up here, we are discuss, going to discuss a few possibilities and the use of game empty game objects. We have already discussed in a few previous few lectures that how we can use the empty game objects to utilize the transform component in spawning and in creating new objects into our scene. So first of all, let's just create an object, let's say 3D object and let's say cube. Let's just make it outside of here. And now I'm going to teach you guys how you can actually make use of your empty game objects inside any scene and how you can actually spawn any object, any player, any element inside your scene at those points. So first of all, let's just add some ground over here. So we have some nice stuff to work with. So let's right click, go to 3D object and add a plane over there. And to color any 3D object, you know, we need a material. So right click in your assets folder and create a new materials folder. Let's call it materials. And inside this materials folder, let's first of all create a material for our plane and right click go to create and here we are going to say material and I'm going to say floor let's just have the color of our floor to some nice brownish color like this and to set our material to any 3d object we just have to drag our material onto it and just leave it right there and now our flow has that that color next what i am going to do is i am going to expand the size of my plane so we have plenty of room to work with so let's just scale it in the x direction to 20 and in the c direction to 20 as well so it has a plenty of room now for us and now you can see the actual object or player is looking very small in considering the whole size of our floor so now what next i'm going to do is i'm going to create an script and that script is actually going to get a list of our spawn points and it is actually going to spawn some objects randomly on those spawn points so consider this uh, an example of for example an fps game let's say and here what you are actually going to do is you are spawning the player over here let's say and you have a bunch of other AIs or other players you can say and you keep some spawn points inside this whole area on different places and you want to actually randomly generate your player or the other players the AIs or the other com uh, competitors and you want to actually spawn them in those different positions so what i'm going to do is i'm going to right click in my hierarchy and i'm going to create an empty object i am going to call this spawn manager right now and then in my assets folder i am going to create a new c sharp script i'm going to call this script spawn manager as well and let's just select our spawn manager object and 
drag our spawn manager script and drop it over our game object and now this script is actually going to run and inside our assets folder we first need to create a folder to hold our scripts so let's say scripts and move this script to this folder and it's nice to be organized and then let's just select this floor and change its name to floor and next what I am actually going to do is I am actually going to create uh, a player or something like that so let's just delete this cube and game object from here real quick and now if I go to my 3d objects I can see that I have a capsule over here so let's just add a capsule right there and move it a bit above so we can actually see it on the ground and now inside my capsule I am going to attach a new component and it is actually going to be a it is actually going to be a capsule yeah so I already have a capsule collider over here so no problem in that so let's just create a new material to give our capsule collider a color so let's go to materials right click go to create and here let's create a new material and say player and set its color to bluish color right there and drag and drop it over our player now let's just go to our folders and create another folder called prefab not prefab a folder called prefabs prefabs and now let's just open it up and drag and drop your capsule to this folder now we have a capsule prefab and we can delete this capsule from here and now we are actually going to create some spawn points inside our whole floor so to do that let's just create an empty game object or what we can also do is select this floor duplicate it and then just delete the actual thing inside of it so we can actually have the same transform values so let's go to the mesh render and remove it then similar we remove the mesh collider and then we remove the plane component as well so now we actually have the same position as we have of our floor let's just change its name to spawn point and next we are randomly going to create a few more and place them in our whole floor so let's just select it let's duplicate it move it to here let's duplicate this one move it here duplicate again move there duplicate move there duplicate there 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 move there duplicate 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 so this way we have just created a few 16 i guess spawn points on random positions on our floor and let's just select all of them and change their names to spawn point like this and now we can actually utilize these transform components on these spawn points to actually spawn our player that we have inside this capsule or prefabs so let's go back to our scripts folder here we have this spawn manager let's right click and open it up in visual studio so we can do our code now first thing we actually going to need is the reference of all of our spawn points to get the reference of all spawn points what we can do is we can actually create an array so we are going to say public public game object and to make an array we put these square brackets in, in front of that and i'm going to say spawn points and we don't need to do anything with these spawn points in the start method because we are actually going to set them from the inspector let's hit save and now if we go back to our unity scene we can actually see if we select the spawn manager we can actually see a list of the spawn points down here and it says size equals to zero 
and now if we increase the size we can actually going to see the third number of slots in over here so since we have 16 points over here we can actually do two things we can actually select all of these and let's just lock this over here so we can actually go away and come back again let's select all of these and put these into these spawn points so it is automatically going to set the size to 16 and it is going to get the reference of all those 16 points automatically and let's just go and save this scene so we can actually save our progress too let's just call this main and so we have everything saved up and we don't lose it now in inside our spawn manager script we are going to need the reference of this prefab that we have over here and i'm going to call it public game object player and let's hit save and go back and now we should have the player slot appear over here let's drag this up and drop it on our slot so our script ha now has the reference of our capsule let's go back to our script now and now what we actually want to do is we want to create a function let's say public void void create player what we actually want to do over here is we are actually going to set this create player function with a button in our UI and inside here we are actually going to spawn our player on random points inside these spawn points so how we actually spawn or instantiate another game object so to do that we have this instantiate function and it takes an object so the object we have is player next thing we have to do is we actually have to provide it a position vector 3 so we can say spawn points and we can let's say use the first element for now and then we can say transform dot position so or we can actually directly give it the spawn point dot position and then we have to give a quaternion dot identity let me introduce you to the whole thing in just a bit we do need a transform there let's hit save and this is actually doing that the spawn point at the zero index and i'm getting the transform of that spawn point and i'm giving the position that of that spawn point to my player and I am saying quantitarian dot identity. It is basically the transform transforms rotation and identity basically represent a standard rotation. So it, it is going to be zero zero zero. And back in Unity, what we actually have to do that if we try to create a player over here inside our first spawn point you will see that it has gone let's set it to zero zero two so you can see there is the here is the the capsule over here and let's just delete it let's just delete it over here because it, it it's actually meshed right now because we have made it the child of this spawn point because the scale of our spawn points was not right and it ha it has let's just unlock this the spawn points have the scale of 2020 so that doesn't matter right now but if we set the capsule to the position of our spawn point so let's just say 0 0.21 and 8 so let's set 0 0.21 and 8 you will notice that our player is actually inside half inside the floor and half outside the floor so to actually resolve this issue we can simply select all of our spawn points and what we can do is we can just simply drag and move them a little bit up above the ground so now if i 
see that the y of this spawn point 0 is 21 and select my capsule and change the y you can see now it actually is in the air not in the ground so that's still all right for us and to actually get this player back to the floor what we can simply use is select our prefab and here we can simply add another component which is going to be essentially in the physics we are going to actually select the rigid body component and it is going to actually automatically attach the physics and the gravity functionality to our capsule so now back inside our function where we actually created a player we are actually spawning it on zero so let's go into our scene and here we are going to create a button to actually create some players so let's add a button and let's change it to 2d double click your button to move it to it and let's just drag and drop it on the top set the anchor preset to top right right there and change the button text to say that create player let's just set it to bold so we can easily see it and select your button add a click listener and give the reference of our spawn manager right there and the spawn manager script and here we have the create player function let's hit save and now if we are going to use and click this button we can actually see a player being created at the spawn point zero let's hit play and create a player and you can see that we have actually created a player at the spawn point zero which was essentially over here and now what we are actually going to do is I am actually going to randomize this zero number instead so let's say integer index equals to random dot range and inside range we actually have to provide a minimum value and a maximum value so I can say zero is the minimum value and the max value is going to be the value that my array has or the length of my array and the upper part is actually exclusive so we get a random number every time from 0 to the length of our array and then instead of this 0 I am actually going to use the index over here right there and now whenever I am going to call it it is randomly going to pick a position and it is going to instantiate the or spawn our player over there let's hit play and uh, let's just click this button and it is it has created a capsule but we cannot see it because our camera is not right there in the place so let's just select your camera move back to 3d mode and change it to see all the floor make it right there like this just rotate it a bit go to rotation mode and rotate it so it can actually see what's on the floor let's just undo the rotation first and take it back and I think we can just move it there and move it to there there and it looks okay and now we can actually rotate it to the front side so we can actually see or we can simply set it to 90 degree and move it above from our crown so we can actually see everything perfectly so let's just move it there move it a bit there let's do this yeah so now we can actually see the whole area whole floor perfectly right there now if i hit play i can actually see the all of the floor 
and now as soon as I hit create player you can see that it has created the player over there and now this time it created a player over there and this time there 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 and if I keep on doing that it is going to keep on instantiating and spawning the new players on random positions you will also notice that there are some some are being instantiated of the same place so that's just the probability of the random range function and we are going to actually create some more and it this is the way how you do it with the button let's hit save and go back to our script and in my start function what i am actually going to do is i'm simply going to add a for loop and i'm going to say from integer zero i want it to do integer zero and i want it to do 10 hundred so it's actually going to run a hundred times and inside my start for loop i'm going to say create player so as soon as i hit start it is automatically going to create a hundred player for us so let's just play it and yeah you can see the hundred hundreds of the players have been instantiated for us and the reason they are going up and down is because that they actually have the rigid body and they are colliding with each other and reacting to the collision and going doing different different stuff you just notice that it went there and come back by hitting the ground so that's the actual reason they are bouncing here and there that's not a problem so this is the actual way that i showed you guys that you can use this script to actually do the spawning functionality of your 3d game may may it be the may it be an fps or any other thing whatever you want you want to spawn the players or you want to randomly place some pickable objects into your game or loot or whatever you can actually use this system to actually spawn the different objects or different things inside your game and let's just wrap it up i think